Hi everyone, my name is Katarina and I'm a developer experience engineer at Memgraph. Today I'm going to show you how to analyze supply chain with Graph Notebook and Memgraph. To start off, let me first explain what is Graph Notebook. Graph Notebook is a library extending Jupyter Notebooks to integrate with different kinds of graph databases. It is developed by AWS and it really eases the way of interacting with different kinds of graph databases. And if you are a Python developer, this can be especially useful for you if you want to run, run a separate kinds of Python code blocks or if you want to connect with different graph databases. Um, and in this way, you can easily interact. You can just insert a, a Cypher query or a different kind of query and run that all uh, directly from your Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this means that you don't have to set up uh, different kinds of drivers to connect with the graph databases. You just can run your query in whichever language directly from your code block. Uh, so uh, now that we covered the basics, uh, let's install all of the prerequisites. The first thing you'll need to install is Python and you need versions 3.7 to 3.10. So make sure that you have that. Uh, another thing that we'll install is graph database. So let's start with that. In our case, we are going to use memgraph. So memgraph is an in-memory graph database. Uh, it's built in C++. This means it's quite performant. You can use Cypher query language to query memgraph and it uses Bolt protocol. So uh, because it's using Vault protocol and it supports open cipher, this means that we can query memgraph uh, with graph notebook. And this is why I also decided to try it out. So to install memgraph, the easiest way uh, you can head over to our documentation, getting started and then install memgraph. And here you have a simple command docker run. Uh, so just to explain it a bit, we are uh, installing memgraph platform image. This image consists of a database, a graph analytics library called Mage, and a web interface called, called memgraph lab. This is mainly for visualization purposes. And um, this is the best image to get started with just because it has it all and you don't have to worry about any, adding any additional stuff to it. So, Another thing that is worth mentioning is that you need to have these three ports opened up. So the first one is for Vault Protocol Cypher querying. Uh, the second one is for uh, being able to access logs inside MemGraph Lab. And the third one is to have MemGraph Lab as the web interface. So once we have this, we can copy it. We can uh, head over to Terminal. I will make this a bit larger for you. And we can run this command. Uh, you'll notice a lot of logs, that's totally fine. So by default, MemGraph will uh, print out logs here. If you want to have logs at a like a higher level, you can set it uh, with flags. Uh, the setting is called log level. Usually we recommend users whenever they want to get more insight uh, or debug something, they could set log level to trace. Uh, and to explain a bit the versioning, so MemGraph platform has a couple of tags. You can have only memgraph and lab. You can have memgraph lab and mage. And just make sure you uh, pull the latest version, not locally, but the latest version from Docker Hub, Hub. And you can always check here which one is it. OK, so now we have a database. Just to make sure that everything is running smooth, you can head over to localhost 3000 connect to the database and see that it's here, it's just empty. So yeah, uh, next step is uh, we need to install everything from Graph Notebook so we can connect to MemGraph. So the next is installing Graph Notebook. So as you can see, it's available via pip. So you just have to run pip install Graph Notebook. I actually already did that. So let me show you just to verify the versioning. So pip show graph notebook. Uh, what I did, I also run a pip install graph notebook and got 3.9 because at the point when I was installing this, this was the latest version. And another thing, you should have Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab. I decided to use Jupyter Lab. 
So yeah, you just need to run pip install Jupyter Lab, and they recommend um, Graph Notebook recommends installing version between three and four. So I also did this and just to verify pip show Jupyter Lab, and this will give me probably the latest version inside that um, between three and four. So this is three point three point two. Okay, now we have it all. Uh, just be careful uh, if you are using, uh, we will be using uh, these called magic functions uh, that will help us run queries with the Cypher or to set up a configuration. And this error might happen to you. So don't worry if it happens and it happened to me too at the first run. Uh, just make sure you follow these instructions on Graph Notebook Readme, which is by the way, awesome. And uh, it will help you fix everything. Uh, I think that's it uh, regarding prerequisite, and now we can head over and uh, start our Jupyter Lab. To start Jupyter Lab, we will need this command. So the above one will copy pre-made started notebooks. Uh, you can do that. I think I already did it, but uh, I have some of my notebooks, so I recommend you doing that if you want to try everything that there is from. Uh, graph notebook, but to start Jupyter Lab, you can use this command. So, okay, let me see. I need a new terminal and I just copy paste this command. This will open up uh, localhost 8888. So, this is the server where I have Jupyter Lab running. And uh, in this case, I have supply chain analysis with my graph notebook. Uh, this is the notebook that is actually available uh, on my current fork of Graph Notebook um, repository. It's being, uh, I created a PR on Graph Notebook projects. It's still being reviewed uh, as I'm speaking, but e this is available on my fork and you can find it uh, from the PR. So you can play with the, uh, with the data set, you can play with this notebook. So no worries, you don't have to worry that I, I won't provide you this. So. Uh, feel free to download it and uh, run the queries. So we'll go through this notebook. Uh, uh, and the first, let me explain a bit uh, why I'm even doing the supply chain analysis topic. So supply chain management is quite popular use case in graph databases. Uh, and the reason for that is that in supply chain, if you are thinking of delivering a product, producing a product and delivering it to uh, numerous locations, and this product needs to be made from uh, numerous ingredients and so on, and you're thinking about it and you're already probably drawing a graph in your head just because you have these nodes, you have these edges and everything. And now someone says, okay, can we make it uh, better? Can we optimize it? Can we uh, deliver products more efficiently, quickly? Can we not waste that much money on uh, this supply chain and so on? Can we have notifications when something goes wrong? Can we predict things that which might happen? And then you go, okay, yeah, we need to store it somewhere in a database to be able to analyze it. And if someone says, okay, let's put it in a table, then kind of all of this picture in your head of an actual network of the supply chain goes away and quitting it also becomes quite uh, quite hard it uh, like it's not easy to do all of the different recursive calls that might happen and it's maybe not that quick and you need to act quickly on if something happens it affects your business it wastes your money and time so graph database seems like a perfect option to store something that is in its nature a network. And MemGraph is great at this, uh, and especially if you have a real-time use case where you need fast writes and you want to get uh, the uh, analysis results and you want to get the results of your queries uh, quite fast. And this is why we would recommend using MemGraph in this kind of uh, use cases. So now I've done a little bit of intro why I even decided to do supply chain analysis. And I think you might like uh, the results of the queries, uh, they are quite simple and hopefully uh, everyone will understand it uh, and we'll do also a bit of visualization in MemGraph Lab. So yeah, let's start. Uh, first step we already did, we run MemGraph Platform, so we can sk skip that one. And next up we need to set up a Graph Notebook configuration. 
And for that, I'll be using localhost and 7687 port just because I started memgraph at localhost 7687. So I just need to run this um, cell. Uh, you're probably familiar with JupyterLab, but yeah, uh, I run uh, command enter, but you can do like play. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so it's not that hard. You can also run a couple of um, cells. Uh, you can run all of them. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's up to you. I'm going to go step by step just to make sure uh, you can follow. So now we need to uh, test the connection because we here connected to the database and we just want to make sure everything is working as it's supposed to work. You can notice here that we use the magic function that I mentioned before. So we will use another one to test the connection and to actually run all of our Cypher queries. This one is called OC and this represents open Cypher. And I added another argument called Bolt just because I want my Cypher queries to be run over Bolt protocol because MemGraph is using Bolt, not HTTP. So if I run this simple query, which actually uh, matches all of the nodes in the database and returns the count, uh, of uh, those nodes, so the number of nodes in the database, I will, of course, get zero because our database is currently empty. And you can check that also in uh, MemGraph Lab. So we have zero nodes and zero relationships. Um, okay, uh, so next up, we want to fill this database with some data. And for this, I created a simple supply chain data set, nothing complicated, just wanted to show you how that works. So we have suppliers, uh, we are using just simple create queries for uh, running, uh, for creating a database. Uh, we are also creating some relationships between those nodes, uh, which are ingredient, product, final product, shipping, and so on. Um, and as you can see, it's nothing too complicated, but let me run this, fill the database, and then we can sh see how the graph schema looks like. So if you run this, uh, the database should be filled up. Let's see in MemGraph Lab. Okay, so we have now 34 nodes and 49 relationships. That's awesome. And let's see what's inside. I generated a new graph schema just so it doesn't mess up with the things I did before. Okay, so we have here a supplier that supplies an ingredient. Ingredient forms a recipe. Recipe can form a product and this product actually forms recipe and now, now then we have recipe that produces a final product so these are some kind of intermediate products and this final product finally gets ships shipped with some kind of shipping when you click on a certain node you can see its properties how much of them there is uh, and so on so this is quite nice uh, it's at least colorful and we get to see uh, what is actually happening in our database without running any query. Uh, so I really like this feature. Uh, okay, uh, let's see what's next. So uh, next we'll be running uh, simple queries uh, for supply chain analysis. I'm going to show you how uh, some advanced analytics can actually be quite easy to perform uh, in MemGraph. So first up, uh, we have acquiring critical hubs in a network with Betweena Centrality. Uh, Betweena Centrality actually uh, calculates the import importance of the node based on how frequently it lies on uh, the shortest paths between other nodes. So this means, generally speaking, that if that node isn't there anymore, if something went wrong with it, that you lose this connection between all of the other nodes because every shortest path goes through, not every, but most of the shortest paths go through that node. So it's good to know which nodes in your network are that important so you can maybe pay more attention to them. In order to run, uh, to get that information and to run that query, we will use between a centrality module from the mage library and it has a procedure called get and uh, you just yield these two values of so between a centrality of a node and while doing this we can also set this between a centrality uh, measure to a property of a node and then you can use it later for your querying. So if I run this I just uh, set all of the values and to return them uh, I will 
uh, now just match all of the ingredients and get the centrality measure but I also want to see to what the certain ingredient is connected to uh, just because it makes sense to see why it's actually that important so for example here the uh, node with the largest between a centrality measure was uh, the ingredient node with the largest between a centrality measure was ingredient 10 and the reason for that is obviously because it does form the largest number of recipes so if we don't have ingredient number 10 then a lot of things go wrong for example here we can see that the final product 3 and intermediate products 4 and 5 wouldn't be created and that affects some, the other things in the supply chain so this is how we with the help with, of between a centrality discover that another cool thing is that you can use between a centrality online uh, so this is a dynamic version of this algorithm and this helps a lot if you have a lot of new information coming and you still want to dynamically calculate new values of between a centrality and you can for example set up a trigger that lets you know that something has changed that you can you should maybe be careful about other ingredients or you can say okay give me a warning whenever uh, the most important ingredient um, is below some limit uh, so yeah it's quite uh, useful to also use a dynamic version of between a centrality in these use cases okay uh, next thing i'm going to show you a simple query um, to show just what you have in your database for example how to get uh, how to get all of the ingredients that are being supplied by a certain supplier in this case its name is Suplicimus. so you can get all of the information directly from the database I'm just doing a simple match query, uh, match supplier with name Suplicimus, which supplies the ingredient. And I return those ingredients and get that it actually um, supplies uh, four ingredients. And that's quite a lot for this small uh, data set. Um, next, I'm going to show you how you can do a bit more complicated hops. So above, we just did one simple hop but memgraph can also perform different kinds of graph traversals and it's quite fast at it and one of them is called breadth first search and with the breadth first search we can search for the uh, ingredients uh, that form a certain product in this case product with the id6 and if we run this uh, we get the list of all of these uh, ingredients so we can see that uh, ingredient one two eight actually all of them form the final product one that is the product with the id6 um, something maybe more interesting so you can also check dependencies of your product uh, with the ancestor procedure so in memgraph that is in mage we have uh, query modules and graph util is one of them and a part of that module are the procedures in this case i'm going to show you how the ancestor procedure works uh, and this one will actually capture uh, all the nodes from which a path to the destination node in this case final product with the id6 exists so we are finding this final final product we are trying to find all of its ancestors and returning them so in this case we see that uh, we get all of the things that participated uh, that needed to be created before uh, that are connected in some way with uh, this final product i know that in this way like in a table it's not quite it's not quite um, expected so maybe it's better if we draw it in a graph um, here i have a query that helps with that and i'm just going to copy it and I'm going to go here in memgraph lab. I will paste the query, just a sec. Okay, I will select it and run it. And before I go to the image, just to say that here, we use the same procedure ancestors, but in this case, we also uh, use the procedure called connect nodes. And this allowed us to get all of the connections between the nodes that were mentioned that are connected to the final product with ID6. I will go to full screen just to bring it a bit closer. Okay, so this is the final product that we were observing. So in the ancestor nodes, we got all of these nodes, but nothing was quite clear just because they weren't connected. But now 
If I go from final product one, I can see that its ancestor is its recipe, of course. Then I can see which intermediate products are form this recipe for final product one. And then I can head over to each of the intermediate products and see how their tree expands. So this is useful when you want to really see which are the steps that affect the production of a certain product. Now, you may also go in a totally different direction and try to find all of the descendants of a product. So uh, if you want to, not only the product, but also you can try it here on the supplier. So if we want to ask ourselves, okay, uh, for which, for production of which products um, does my supplier have the most um, effect? So if this supplier goes missing, like, how which products won't get shipped in the end so i can run this query and i can easily get that this supplier is um, responsible for all of these things but then again if i have it in a graph it would be much more easier to see what's actually happening so if i go here run selected i will go full screen so we had suplicimus as our um, supplier and as you can see, Suplicimus supplies four ingredients, and that's a lot in this uh, database. And all of these ingredients form different recipes and in the end, different intermediate products. And that gets to the different final products and it ends up at different shipping points. So all of this is affected by just one supplier. And we have them four, I think, in this database. So this is quite a large subgraph or of our whole graph. So let me also show you the whole graph. So we maybe get a bigger picture, but as you can see, here is our Suplicimus. And if we compare it with uh, this one and this one and this one, you can see a bit of difference of how Suplicimus is quite important here. But you could calculate the same for the set, uh, so the descendants for other uh, suppliers too and see how that affects uh, your supply chain. Um, and uh, in the end, I'm going to show you something that is quite interesting also for this use case. So uh, there are cases when some operations can start before others finish and that could cause problems because it blocks the pipeline until the job with no dependencies finishes. So then some jobs are released and resolved of their dependencies and they can start executing again. So it's important to know the order in which you will produce something or it needs to be produced in order to optimize your processes. And topological sort from GraphUtil can be quite helpful here. So here we are actually trying to find uh, recipes that form that some way through some path, go to the final product. We are uh, projecting this. This means that we are just looking at this subgraph of these uh, paths. And we are calling a topological sort on this and returning these nodes. Okay, so if I start this, I will get this list of nodes. Uh, and what this actually tells me is that if I have a final product too, I need to have these things before it all done. If I have then final product one, I need these things to be done. If I have final product three, I need these things to be done. So now this is just again in a table, but let's try to draw this in a graph too, to make it more clear. So I will combine a bit this query that I had before with this one. So what I will need, I again want graph. So I will copy this part because here I got nodes from the topological sort and I like that. I will take those nodes and connect them. Okay, I like this. I already have a graph, so I will call this one new graph. Okay, and I will return it and I don't need this anymore. And let's see how this looks like. Okay, I, I didn't do something right, of course. Yeah, I used the wrong variable for the nodes. It happens. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me just 
bring this to a full screen and let's see what's happening. So as said, here you can easily see if you are interested in the information of the order, like if you get some recipe, you want to get to the final product, what you need to do. So for example, here I have final product one. And from this, I can see that these steps are needed for the final product one. I have final product two. Okay, I have this recipe for final product two. I see that I need these three intermediate products. For this one, I need this recipe. For this one, I need this recipe. And for this one, I need this recipe. So that's great. And of course, I have final product three. And for this one, I have a bit uh, larger requirements. But again, you can go through this and see what are the what are the needed products for the final product three. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you got to learn a bit about Graph Notebook and MemGraph. I showed you a bit of supply chain management use case, but MemGraph is suitable for other graph use cases too. If you decide to try it out and have questions, don't hesitate to join our Discord community or schedule an office hour call. Until next time, bye!